What's new with me? She's never kept. Bobby, Randy, can you help me carry her? Why not? I've been carrying her all evening. <laughs> Broadway? 
Eric, Georgia, you keep writing tunes that bounce. Oscar, you keep writing checks that don't. But until a leading lady gets out of the hospital, who knows what happens next? They just have her under observation. I'm sure she'll be out by morning. Is there no limit? Ooh, that sounds like our director. Is there no limit? He got such horrendous reviews. Is there no limit? I ask you to my unbridled brilliance. Chris, where the hell were you tonight? I put a lot of money into this show, and I think you owe all of us. Oh, be still, your foolish mouth. Nothing to be gleaned by watching one's show with the fraudulent audience of an opening night. Went for a walk, passed by the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. Went in wildly spiritual. I tell you, those Catholics really know how to put on a show. <laughs> right there, in the middle of the Eucharist, I had an epiphany. At this moment in the stage of any show, one should refrain from inventing anything brilliant, but eliminate all that is God awful. And what I ask you without fear of contradiction is the most God awful thing in our show. Just yes, so. <laughs> of course. Now, Carmen, I came back here to convince you to rid of our star. Only to have the test inform me that she is in the hospital. I see the hand of the Lord in this. <laughs> Here's a phone call for you in your office. Thanks, Johnny. That's probably my husband calling. And where was Sydney tonight? Carmen? Sydney's in New York booking as a theater. And, knowing my husband, also probably booking a soprano who doesn't dance but knows how to move. <laughs> we shouldn't joke about it. <laughs> it's easy to joke about marriage when men like Sydney and you don't take it seriously. I never did more than flirt with any woman in any cast once you and I got married. Barbara O'Brien. She was an usher. And that was only after you had moved out. Oh, so you finally looked up to her music and noticed I was gone. Johnny, you're the stage manager. How is the cast taking the reviews? They decided to dress to the nines and throw an open combination and closing party. Oh, defeatist a lot of you. You've yet to hear my plan of action, but hear it ye shall. Johnny, come help me watch you move the piano. <laughs> plan? What plan? Does he expect us to go to Broadway using an understudy? Well, at least we'd still have Bobby in the title role. And that's what matters, right? I mean, the whole reason you teamed back up with me again so you could rekindle some romance with our leading man. Aaron, when I signed up, I had no idea Bobby was even in the show. Really? Then why at the very first rehearsal would you walk right up to him and say, Hi, Bobby. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> well, looks like we're all going to be heading back to New York a little sooner than we thought. But if you and I are going back together, this is one plot that's a big hit with me. Très bien, mes petits enfants. A brief demonstration of what's been wrong with this show since its very first love song. You mean, thinking of him? That's one of my best songs in the show. One of our best songs. See, George agrees with me. Nonetheless, I've had a problem with it since our very first day of rehearsal. I wonder, Georgia, can we hear a little bit of our leading lady's song? Which song is this? The one with the new lyric Georgia wrote about me. About Rob Hood. Precisely, Aaron. Play. Georgia, sing. Wait, I... Johnny, put her in like Q5. Like Q5? This is silly. I haven't sing on stage in years. Just...
Georgia? Gee, I find it to hear how, how that song was meant to go. Listen, Chris, if you think there'd been something wrong with that song, you'll have to tell me what. It's that we ever allowed Jessica Bradshaw <laughs> to sing it. <laughs> Listen, company, I think it's a damn shame our leading lady collapsed during tonight's performance. She might have done it weeks ago and saved us a month of misery. <laughs> but this cavity must be filled appropriately. May I speak? As Jessica's understudy, I just feel terrible taking over oh, under these conditions. No need to feel terrible, Nikki. But I really think that No maybe... need, because you are still going to be the understudy. To Georgia. Georgia? That's the best idea I've ever had. I... I don't know, Chris. Oh, come on. You wrote the songs. You know them better than anyone. I know it's been some time since you traded in your tap shoes for a rhyming dictionary, but Excuse I... Excuse me? Oh, speaking for those of us in the chorus, I really think Nikki should get the role. She's talented and dedicated and... And since you're Nikki's understudy, if she gets the lead, you get her part. Well, yes, that too. Nice try, Bambi. But either Georgia is in or I am out. What do you say, Oscar? Chris, I'll put my money where your mouth is. Fun, Chris, Chris. Now, Aaron, I... Assured that this move more than meets your approval. I, um, no, to be honest, it doesn't. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I have my reasons. You always have. Besides, the entire debate is pointless if Jessica shows up tomorrow. God, help us. Her performance was worse than ever this evening. Jessica Cranshaw will never be better than she was this evening. But she was horrible. I know. But she'll never be better. <laughs> She's dead. That was the hospital on the phone. In terms of future performances, Jessica Cranshaw has a conflict. What? What happened? They want to tell me. Chris, would you like to say something to the company about Jessica? Well, shall we observe a moment of silence? To match the audience's response to Jessica's first number. Chris! <laughs>
of the Greater Boston Police. I'm assigned to the Homicide Division and... It's an honor to be on the same stage with each and every one of you! has got to be one of the most 
killing things a cousin could ever hope to do. You people, you're all heroes to me. You're a special kind of people known as show people. You live in a world of your own. The audience play plenty to sit there and clap. And they're hearing you sing, so watching you tap. You know your dentist wants to be in show business Your window washer wants to be a star And though your analyst may never couch it that way Some policeman and detective dream of show business. We can't get arrested, but still. We sit around the station and fancy this life. We cheer Sherlock Holmes and cheer Mac the Knight.
<laughs> Your mother is home, but I'll murder you. You'll drop for the curtain does. If you don't quit, you'll die legit. <laughs> Well, they seem pretty negative in spirit. Well, yes, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you hoping for the Arthur Conan Doyle version? Unfortunately, these notes reveal very little about a killer. Except that he's a man in his early thirties, approximately six feet four in height, wears a pewter ring, and despite being right-handed, is known to his closest friends as Lefty. <laughs> Oh, I don't. Oh, you were probably hoping I could tell that from... Well, if I could do that from just... Wow. <laughs> Gee, for a second I was impressed. <laughs> As I once told my husband at the hotel <laughs> Well, 
Because if I don't, there's really no reason for us to keep talking. Then take me into your confidence with confidence, Lieutenant. Something's very wrong here. I just met an opening night cast who seemed incredibly eager to close. Well, I can understand how they might feel. They all left wonderful jobs and hit Broadway musicals to work up here in Boston. I've never performed outside of the city, and Baby's had to fight her mother the whole way just to be in the chorus. The rest of the crew are underpaid and overworked. But surely not enough to drive any of them to murder. Keep in mind, I'm within an arm's reach at any hour of the day or night. You think I'm in some danger? No, that was a completely unrelated thought. <laughs> you live with danger on a daily basis, don't you, Lieutenant? Oh, most of the time it's just paperwork and procedure. Detectives have no opening night, Miss Harris. We make our entrance after the curtain has fallen on someone else's life. But it's a calling, isn't it? Like a teacher or a doctor? Or an actor. I suppose you're right. I couldn't imagine doing anything else with my life. It's not wrong to be married to one's work, is it? Uh, no. Not at all. But sometimes it's no money. I love my job. I really do. And if I say so myself, I'm good at it too. I catch the bad guys, well, most of the time. So it's a good life, a perfectly good life. Not exactly so Cause at the end of the day, when I crawl into bed, I reflect as I turn out the lights. That the day that's to come, the week that's ahead, will be lunch counter mornings and the coffee shop nights. Lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. Well, yeah, I like my pals, the guys on the force. We're not very social, but they're all married, of course. Sometimes we go bowling or have a few beers. So it's a fine life, a perfectly fine life. I give it to cheers. Sometimes I think at the end of the day, what I've read. The last burglar has right that the life that I lead is a little bit gray with its lunch counter mornings and the coffee shop nights. Lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. But your acting roles, don't they make for change? Oh, Miss Harris, each year from May 22nd to the 3rd of June, when I turn my life over to the Swallow Street Players, that's more than a vacation for me. That's an overture of hope. It's the current rising of the greatest joy of my life. As for the rest of the year, the life that I lead is a little bit gray. There are plenty of low days and not many nights. Mostly lunch counter mornings and coffee. too forward, but might I walk you home? Oh, I'd be delighted. But you said not that to be. Damn! Just great. 
I mean, impossible, I know, but somehow I do it. <laughs> if one of you is the killer, please take her next. <laughs> Hotel room. Claim your bundle downstairs, and in one half hour, Lieutenant Chalk will begin questioning Alphas and Tenors. Ah, Herr Lieutenant, rising from your investigation chamber to grace us with your presence. Thought I'd stretch my legs. I've been stuck in the green room all day. At least you got to sleep in your own bed last night. Sorry about that. I, uh, I am treat you, don't I? Yes, Mr. Bell. As both a director and a suspect. Hey, Lieutenant, I got one more. Oh, thank God. And did you get the clothes I asked for for Nikki Harris? Yeah, blues and greens, right? Very simple, right? No, I'm trying to match her eyes. Heads up, I'm tripping the silk. Excuse me, Lieutenant Frank Chalk. Mind telling me who you are and how you got in here? Oh, Lieutenant, as a member of the press, I'm exempt from your little quarantine, Daryl Gray of the Boston Globe. After the review, you gave Robin Hood. I don't know why you want to show your face here, of all places. Oh, I'm as mystified as you are, but the show's producers actually called me down for a little meeting. That's right, Carmen Bursky, Mr. Grady. You ever thanks for coming by, if not for your review? Listen, I tried my level best to say something good about your little production. I praised the choreography, and the young woman who played the school mom, Nikki... Harris? Yes. Well, that's all history now. My condolences on the loss of your star and your show. Randy, when you interviewed me last week, I told you we're going for our way no matter what you learned about us. We're keeping Robin Hood open, and once we've ironed out the kinks, we're asking you to review it again with Georgia Hendricks in the lead. Georgia Hendricks? Your lyricist? Well, she hasn't been in the show for years. That's some story. And yes, there is, of course, a precedent for re-reviewing a show that has a new lead. I'll tell you what, I'll re-review your show tomorrow night. Tomorrow? It's the best I can do. And do try to keep in mind that most shows can't survive too bad reviews from the globe in one week. Carmen, go tell the cast we have 24 hours till a week of rehearsals. If we fail, you'll live to regret it. Sydney, I guess the reason you're such a low life is because they built you so close to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good day, Lieutenant. You just made it one, Miss Harris. That dress goes very nicely with your eyes, Lippy. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Joe Grady, I can't believe it. Am I allowed to uh, offer my thanks for the kind words you wrote? Uh, try not to misunderstand, Miss Harris, but I do try not to fraternize with the artists I review. But if I may say, your performance did stand out, or otherwise it would be a Abundantly misguided production. Mr. Grady, I thought your review of Robin Hood was needlessly cruel and way off the mark. Well, no offense, Lieutenant, but I'm not entirely certain that you know how to judge acting. Of course, you're right. Although, I regret to inform you, I'm now placing you under arrest for the crime of murder. What? what? Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. What are you saying? This is insane. I'm saying my best line from Agatha Christie's Murder at the Visceridge. <laughs> I played Chief Inspector Slack for the Matic Town Players two summers ago. <laughs> oh, did you think I was being real? Gosh, I'm not sure you know how to judge acting, Mr. Grady. <laughs> <laughs> you can go now. Come on, I'll show you the door. Swell acting lieutenant, and not just community theater level. I mean college. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> And how's your investigation coming along, if I may ask? I've been going with the show's financial records. And you know what? You were right. Everyone here is working for the same equity minimum. Not just newcomers like you and Bambi, but your stars as well. Look, this is no place for us to continue talking. Let's say you and I get out of here and... You won't let me. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Clear the stage immediately! I have just been informed I have less time to reinvent the show than Moses had to cross the Red Sea. And he had God on his side. <laughs> Is this true? I'm being reviewed tomorrow? Yes. All right. I have no choice but to re in the same boat here and now. 
Nikki, go fetch Bam. Oh, I'm going to have to see this. Why? Do you think something is going to happen? No. I really like this number. <laughs> Although. What? Oh, it's nothing. But. What? Gosh. I can't believe I'm saying this and shoot me with my own gun. What gun. is it? I don't think simply changing the choreography is going to help. The song itself is kind of lackluster. It lacks. Yes. Muster. <laughs> <laughs> and a rowboat that's sinking fast, trying to reach the federal courthouse in Witch Hall. For the farmers lose their land? That's great stuff! It's your 11 o'clock number! But the song itself is kind of... I wonder, could we hear it a bit? Sasha? Ladies, sing the little tip, would you? Here you go, Chaucer. Just for you. In the same boat, on the same sea, shaking in the sky, as the tide keeps rising, there he is, ship, there he is, sail, there he is, soul, on the whole horizon, hopefully are not discouraged due to the